Fine. So, let us then move to uh, an another important topic of uh, query optimization, which is the join order. Now, what do I mean by that join order is the following. Suppose, the following join, following natural join needs to be computed. So, there are n relations and the natural join of R 1 joined R with R 2 and so on and so forth with R n needs to be evaluated. The question is, which is the best way of doing these joins? Clearly, R 1 can be first joined with R 2, the result can be then joined with R 3 and so on and so forth or R n can be first joined with R n minus 1 and that can be joined with R n minus 2 and so on and so forth. So, there are many possible ways. So, what is the best way of doing it? Now, before that, the first important question is, what are the number of possible ways? First thing is, if the order of the relations cannot change. So, that means, the R 1 and R 2, the order of these joints cannot change. So, R 1 cannot be joined with R 3 and that cannot be joined with R 2, etcetera. So, R 1 must be joined with R 2 or R 2 must be joined with R 3 and that is need to be joined with R 1, that is. So, if this cannot change, then the total possible ways of uh, completing this join is the Catalan number. This is the n minus 1th Catalan number. The definition of a Catalan number is precisely this, is the number of ways of bracketing this expression up. So, one way of bracketing this expression up is R 1 joined with R 2, that is then joined with R 3, that is then joined and so on and so forth up to R n and you can one can see that there are multiple ways of bracketing this up and this is precisely what we want to find out and that is precisely the definition of the Catalan number of the order of n minus 1th because one of them is already done. So, there is n minus ways or uh, n minus 1 ways of doing it. The n minus 1th Catalan number can be simply written as, so this is j n minus 1 can be simply written as the following way is choosing n minus 1 out of 2 n minus 2 options and all all n of them is equivalent. So, this is divided by n. So, this the equivalent expression of this is the factorial of 2 n minus 2 divided by the factorial of n and the factorial of n minus 1. So, that is the number of ways as one can see that this is quite large for large n's, but uh, for example, for small n's this is not very large. So, for example, if n is equal to 3, then your j n minus 1 is only 2. One can e evaluate this expression. Why is that? Because there are only two ways of doing it. Either it is R 1 joined with R 2 that is joined with R 3 or it is R 2 joined with R 3 and that is joined with R 1. But in general, this is a very, very large number with large genes. So, it is not very easy to evaluate this expression. Now, this is when the order of relations cannot change. Another way of doing it is that when the commutativity is considered different, what does that mean? Is that when R 1 joined R 2 is different, is considered different from R 2 joined R 1 that way and R 1 joined R 2 joined R 3 is different from R 3 joined R 2 joined R 1 is considered different, then the total number of ways of evaluating this is C n which is your 2 n minus 2 factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial. Now, if you remember what the, 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 the connection between C n and J n minus 1 or the n minus 1 th Catalan number is that this is factorial n times J n minus 1. So, what does it mean? Because it is considered different. So, all these factorial n combinations are different. So, for each of these there are factorial n combinations which are all different. So, the C n is essentially factorial n times the Catalan number. So, again we can see that when n is equal to 2 here, C n is equal to only 2 because and the example is simply R 1 joined R 2 and R 2 is joined with R 1. But for large n if for n, this is even larger than the previous one. So, this is again much more difficult. So, that is the other way of thinking about this problem. When commutativity is not considered to be different, so when R 1 joined R 2 is the same as R 2 joined R 1 is not different, then this number comes down to be, we can write it down simply, this can be written down as n, n simply 
टू एन माइनस टू फैक्टोरियल डिवाइडेड बाई टू टू दि पावर अफ एन माइनस वन अफ एन माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल सो एगेन द कनेक्शन बिटुईन एन एन एंड सी एन इज अबियस दैट एन एन इज सी एन डिवाइडेड बाई टू टू दि पावर एन माइनस वन द रीजन इज वन यू फिक्स वन थिंग द अदर एन माइनस वन रिलेशन कैन गो एनी वे एंड फॉर एन इक्वल टू थ्री एन एन इज इक्वल टू थ्री एंड द examples the three things are r1 for example r1 r2 that is joined with r3 that is one the next one is r1 can be joined with r2 and r3 or r1 can be joined with r3 which can be then joined with r2 so essentially first r1 and r2 can be joined or r2 and r3 can be joined or r1 and r3 can be joined and since commutativity is not different it doesn't matter how you write r1 r2 or which order it write so that's why that's the number of uh, join orders now the question is for each of these cases the number of join orders to evaluate is too many and one uh, the algorithm or whatever system that is trying to evaluate which algorithm to use cannot really look at all of these possibilities because this is more than exponent i mean this is exponentially growing with n and for uh, say n equal to 4 or 5 this is just the too large a number to evaluate and it doesn't make sense so what the database engines actually do is that they employ certain heuristics so in case you are not familiar with the term heuristics heuristics is an way of approximation of doing an algorithm in an approximate manner in the sense that we are not trying to get to the correct answer always it's not the optimal answer that one wants to look for but it's an efficient way of doing it that is roughly correct the heuristics uses the concept of joint tree now what exactly is a joint tree is the way of writing it down which order the things are done so if consider this example of there are three relations r1 r2 r3 and suppose r1 r2 is done first and then that is joined with r3 the corresponding joint tree is the following so r1 is joined with r2 and then that is joined with r3 so it is obvious from the joint tree that how the which joins are done in which orders again it's from bottom to top so the question of evaluating all the join orders is the question of enumerating all the joint trees now all the joint trees as we have already argued can be uh, too many so the heuristics that tries to uh, do is to do certain joint trees it doesn't try to enumerate joint trees of every manner but it tries to do only of certain tri joint trees so the first one is called a left deep joint tree so a left deep joint tree essentially the right side for every internal node the right side is a single relation and the left tree can be anything can be a single relation or can be a joint so essentially the tree looks in the following So the tree looks the takes the following shape. This is R1 joined R2. This is then joined with R3. This is then joined with R4, and so on and so forth. So note that all these right sides are the single relations, and the left side is either a single relation or a intermediate join. So this is the left deep join tree, and similar to a left deep join tree, a right deep join tree can also be thought about where the depth is only on the right side the left side is only a single relation that is why it's called a right deep joint tree fine then the third one in this uh, space is called a zigzag tree where it is not specified which side is a single relation but at least one of the sides must be a single relation so at least one child of an internal node is a single relation that is called a zigzag tree and an example of a zigzag tree may be the um, following is that this is fine and then uh, let us say this is on the right side and then let us say this is on the left side so this is a zigzag tree now note that for every join at least one child is a single relation so that is a zigzag tree and finally there is a bushy tree this is called a bushy tree where there is no such restriction and that is essentially the generalized form of a joint tree and the number of bushy trees is essentially the all the join orders so that is the question okay so that is what we have been trying to avoid so bushy tree is the most general form but we will not evaluate it now let us try to analyze the number of join trees for each of this uh, kind of four trees that we have 
seen. So, number of joint trees for the left deep, deep or the right deep it is the same thing, it uh, not any different. For the left deep and the joint right deep, the number of possibilities is only one, because for a left deep there is only one way you can do it, only the left side is, only the right side is a single relation and for right deep it is on the only the left side is a single relation. For a zigzag tree, the number of uh, configurations that is possible is 2 to the power of n minus 2. Now, let us pause for a moment to see why this is 2 to the power of n, n minus 2. The reason why this is 2 to the power of n minus 2 is that, so the first two leaves R1 and R2 can be placed here and then for any of the upper joints, the single relation can be placed either on the left side or on the right side. So, for any of this n minus 2 single relations, it can have two choices left and right. So, that is why this comes out to be 2 to the power of n minus 2. And for bushy trees, this we have already seen and this is essentially the n minus 1 th Catalan number that we have earlier seen. Okay, this is the number of joint tree configurations, joint tree configurations that uh, we can see. And the question then is that uh, this is just the number of shapes that the joint tree can take. And the other question, related question is the number of ways leaves can be placed. So, if the order matters, if order matters, so R1, then R2, then uh, R3, then and so forth, and the number of ways is only one because the order matters. If the order does not matter, so if the order matters, this is one. If the order does not matter, then it does not uh, matter where the R1 and R2 is placed, etcetera. So, the R1 to Rn can be placed in any permutation, uh, that is why the total number of ways leaves can be placed is factorial n. So, if we solve these two, the total number of trees is essentially total number of tree configurations. These are the ways the trees can be generated times the number of ways leaves can be placed. So, now if we say it is a bushy tree with order matters, we know what is the way. If it is a left deep tree with order does not matter, then we know how many trees can be done, etcetera, etcetera. So, that is the way of evaluating the join order. So, now this is all fine. So, this is just a way of finding the total number of trees and in general what is being done is that uh, only left deep. So, practical systems only evaluate left deep trees or right deep trees and may sometimes evaluate zigzag trees if n is not very large. And what is an algorithm for doing it is that consider the join of n things to be done. So, r 1 up to r n. So, how to actually do it? It does a dynamic programming solution. So, there is a dynamic programming solution that is being employed. The dynamic programming solution does the following thing that consider this is your S. Now, S can be broken up into the following manner. S can be written down as an S 1 join with S minus S 1. So, this is the set of all uh, relations that needs to be joined which is S. S 1 is a set of all relations some partition of S. So, the partition is S 1 and S minus S 1. So, this can be written in the best way. Now, the question is what is the best way of evaluating S? The best way of evaluating X is to minimize this over the S 1. So, choose that S 1 that minimizes this configuration. Okay. Now, how is that being done? So, how do you find out what is the best way of doing S 1? S 1 can be again broken down into S 1 1 and S 1 minus S 1 1. Now, what is the best way of finding out S 1 1? Is the minimum way of doing S 1 1 and so on and so forth. So, that is this lends itself to a dynamic programming solution and that is how this is being done and the solutions of each of these subsets essentially S 1, S 1 1 etcetera is, are stored in a table like manner that is the dynamic programming solution. And then to compute any one of them, it uses everything else around it. So, it uses all the previous computations. Fine. So, that is the algorithm for this join order and this as one can see this is exponential n and so on and so forth. 
So, the dynamic programming solution even though it is faster, but it is still there are many, many ways uh, one can do it. And there is a related concept called then interesting sort order. So, an interesting sort order is that one can uh, do the sorting in any way, but an interesting sort order is that the records are sorted in a particular manner that is going to be useful later. So, suppose there is an operation after which there is a selection on a particular attribute A. Now, in that old operation after which the selection is going to be applied in that old operation if the output is produced in the manner where the records are sorted according to A, then the subsequent selection on A becomes much faster. So, that is an interesting sort order because it is useful later and uh, note that the previous operation can be outputting it in any order, but it makes it useful later if that interesting sort order where it is sorted by A is produced. 